Zechariah, the ninth chapter, 9 through 13, and 
verses 16 and 17. I mean, 16 and 17. And you know, <clears throat> here we need, a, we need another prophet, Zechariah. He had visions of a day when, when God brings down all earthly power and start an eternal right of peace. And he starts out with verse 9, he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and so shout and cheer, daughters of Jerusalem. <clears throat> Your king is coming, a good king who makes all things right. An humble king riding a donkey, a mere coat of a donkey. He will take away weapons from all the people of the earth. No, no more chariots and people. No more war horses in Jerusalem. No more bows and arrows. He shall bring peace to the nation. His realm shall be from sea to sea and from river to river to the ends of the earth. He says, I have delivered you from death into a waterless pit. Because of the covenant I made and you sealed with blood. See, he said, come to the place of safety, all you prisoners. But well, there is hope. I promise right now, he said, that I will repay you double for all your suffering. Then he said, Judah, you are my bow. Ephraim, you are my arrow. Both of you will be my sword. Like the sword of a mighty warrior, I will stir up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. And then he said, the Lord, their God, shall save his people in the day in that day, as a shepherd carried for his sheep, they shall shine in shall shine in his land as glittering jewels in a crown. How wonderful and beautiful all shall be the abundance of grain and wine will make the young men and girls flourish. Grain, the men and the new wine, the young women. And as we, we only had seven little verses here, but let's look at a few things in this, in this lesson here. They're talking about the coming Messiah. Now, sometimes, you know, people respond to evil conditions in the world with some with a sense of hopelessness, sometimes regret and doom. And, and they need some motivation for continuing on in life. And the prophet Zechariah delivered God's promise of a new world of peace and prosperity for God's people. God commands the people of Jerusalem to, to rejoice greatly. They are to shout in triumph because the Lord has a plan to destroy the enemy and protect his people as Israel received news of this prophecy that people have reason to celebrate. He's telling them to celebrate, you know, Thanksgiving the change. And God tells Israel, said, your king is coming. Just watch, wait, and be ready to receive him. Israel, you know, Israel may have a little difficult thinking about this because all the other kings that they had were bad ones. They had bad experience with kings and they I think we wanted now another king, uh, how is that going to be? But they told him, this king, we're not going to be like any other king. <laughs> and he said, because this king, we're, we're going to have this, uh, he's going to be king, uh, humble, he's going to be loving, say, so it's not going to be like that. And, and they had to reassure the, the Israelites, because they had had such a bad experience with all the kings they had before. And some had a problem when they told that the king would, uh, would be a sign, would take it as a sign of when they said he would be humble. He'll be an humble king. He'll be lowly. They could like, is he going to be weak? Is he going to be poor? How is he going to be with us? And in the eyes of the world, uh, they, it was said that, well, he can't be too much because then he come riding on a donkey. Uh, a king would, 
not be riding on a donkey. You know, he's supposed to be in this chariot and all this, uh, with all these people around him. No, he come in lowly and humble. <clears throat> it said, well, if he was, if he was going to really be a king, he wouldn't be riding in that anyway. But now, but the mission of the new king, it was not to gain, it was not to gain earthly kingdoms, but the redemption of God's children and to his heavenly kingdom. He had a different mission. They had been used to the earthly king, and the earthly king, some of them were arrogant, some of them were oppressive, and they just treated them like they were third class people. So they said another one coming, but see, this one was not going to be like the other. But they did not know that at the time. Um, and he had told them, he said, he's going to take some drastic measures against the enemies of Israel. And he, he said he had to cut off the chariots of Israel, the horse from Jerusalem, followed by the bow and wall. And he said, there'll be no, more, no need for war treatment. He said, the Messiah will unite and protect Israel while safeguarding her borders. That although filled with power, the goal of the coming king was not to promote war, but to establish peace. And he, and he told me, he said, you know, no longer will Israel be known by the shame of exile and defeat. That God will, God will bless them in ways that are fair to all the nations of the world as they depend on them. But now they had a responsibility, he said. They must stay faithful. God's love comes with responsibility. Israel is to, Israel is to treat others justly, not to pick up the old habits now. Say, now you're not going to go back and pick up the old habits that you had before. How y'all did you? You put yourself in classes, you look down on the next one, and you look down on the next one, and next thing you know, you got that little group down there that powerless, has nobody to speak for, so you can't go back to all that stuff. <clears throat> and you know, the Israelite, they had, they had a lot of problems. God delivered them several times. But some of these things they had were their own doing. When God would get them out of something, and they would be blessed, and they would be prospered doing good, it's not long for they're back into their hour of worship, they're back into doing treating the next person like they're something class, just like we do now. And as we look up now, think about it. Now, <clears throat> we're dealing with a lot of stuff too. And some of the stuff we do bring on ourselves. Some of the stuff is an attack of Satan. And some of the stuff God getting our attention. Now, he doesn't know how to get our attention. <clears throat> And you see, when you look at things, just look at some of the things that we're dealing with at this present time. Just think, first of all, look how they're treating the, the immigrants. And then you look at the, how the elderly and the poor. Look at the children, the abuse, the abuse of children, sexual abuse by religious leaders. And, and they're bold, and they are so bold, they're so blatant with the disregard for black life by some law enforcement officer. And the uneven citizen that's given out in our justice system. That's just a few examples of things. We, we can see, you know, every day we, when, when the news come on, it's always something got to be bad. And most times it's involving a law enforcement officer. It's just like we don't mean nothing anymore. And, and see, Israel had been going through a lot of stuff. But we, we're going through a lot of stuff, too, like, like there was. And a lot of it is not our fault. And then see, those that were weak and powerless, those grew often. They, they suffer unnecessary hardship because of the policy that harmed them and limited their opportunities. While those in power, they'll slowly take action for fear of losing their own position. You, you feel like, some feel like there's nowhere to go. Where are you going to go? Uh, nobody's doing anything. 
all these things that are happening to our people. You know, you read about it, you see it on the news, and then you got these special news hour with different people. All they do is come up there and talk about the situation. Nobody either can't do anything, don't know how to do anything, don't know where to start, or don't plan on doing anything. But that's what's happening. We don't, no matter what, it's just like black lives don't matter anymore. Now, it's all right to do that. You know, they act like it's all right to do it. And they said they were doing it in self-defense. But we, you know, we get the front of it. We pay a price. That is a price for living in this world, being black. And it's not even our fault. <laughs> you know, to blame us for being black is just like blaming the night for darkness. We, this is how God has made us and there's nothing we can do about it. But it seems like every day somebody is getting hurt, whether they were driving or whatever they're doing, just because they're black. Somebody's getting hurt. And sometimes we turn on each other too. So we got a lot of things going on. But then, you know, sometimes we want to say now, why did God put an end to our troubles and hardship? He certainly had power to do something. But he's working every evening in our lives according to his will. Now, while God is doing his thing in us, we must keep praising him. Whatever is happening in our, in our lives, good or bad, long term or short, we have the opportunity to magnify God through it. Now, now, you know, when you're going through some stuff, it, it's kind of hard. And you don't feel like, you don't feel like praising God. You don't feel like this. You feel like, poor me, and why is this happening to me? We feel like that a lot. But the thing of it is, you must praise him when it's raining, just like you praise him when the sun shines. When things are going good in your life, it seems like things are just going good. You say, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. But what happens when the trials come? When the, when the trials come, is God still good then? And if he is, you don't see it right there. But the thing about it, when we became children of God, he told us, these things were going to happen. We would have trials and tribulations. The good thing about it as believers in Christ, when we have these problems, maybe we can't do much about it on this side, it, you know, here. But the thing about it is, we know how our stand with God. And when we know how our stand with God, we got it together with God. Then we move out of the way and let him do the hard part. And let him take care of it. Because when he fix it, it's going to be fixed right. But if he let us fix it, um, my friend will look for vengeance anyway. He said, if you did it to me, now I'm going to do it to you. But that's not the way God works. And the way he works things out for us, sometimes it's just downright hurtful because here this person has been so bad and look like they didn't do it. But he got a plan for everything. Everything and everybody. And as, you know, sometimes we, we just go through so much sometimes. It feels like, you know, it feels just like we're in captivity sometimes. We feel like we're exiled. Where do we belong? Where do we belong? Every turn that we make, somebody thinks we're wrong. And, you know, and when you, when you're going through stuff, you still have an opportunity to magnify God. That's what he would tell him. It was like, says, oh, rejoice, shout, because your king is coming. Well, we can rejoice and shout. Our king is coming also. This, this, is, we, this is now, but this is not forever. And praise God in that. Because one day, God is coming back for you.
for his church. He's coming back for the people who have believed in him, who have struggled, who have put up with a lot of sin, who had to bear a lot of burdens. He's coming back for us. And then we know, okay, we say that we are serving God. We are one of God's children. But then, you know, we got that taken care of. So all we need to do is just, just keep moving on. Just keep moving on each day. There are going to be some days when it's going to be sunshine and pretty. There are going to be some days when it's going to be rain, thunderstorms, tornadoes, <coughs> hurricanes, and all of that kind of stuff. But we just keep right on moving. Once we put it in God's hand and he knocks it down, he's in control. No matter what happens, you're going to be all right. If he decides to take you in something like that, you're still all right. See, either way you do, if he takes you in that, you're all right. And if he lets you come back and keep you here for a while, you're still going to be all right. Because you don't got that part set up. You don't got that big. And, and so, if, you know, there's really no way around some of the things that we, that are happening with us. It's so unfair, of course. And I, you know, we all have to brace ourselves sometimes. I know I do. When you hear this bad news about uh, an officer shot another person, most times the person shot is black anyway. So I already done set myself up to get mad about that why I didn't see who it is. Because I know how they do. But nobody, you know, it seems just like nobody is doing anything. But you have these special shows come on that they talk show that they just talk about. But why keep hashing it over and over again? If it's happening, if they're not going to do anything about it, then don't be advertising on TV. It just really makes it harder for us. And so, you know, it's like the victim. They don't seem to be concerned about it. But, you know, our day is coming. Oh, and, and you know, we're going through this, and it says, you know, you know, we can magnify the Lord when we're going through it. That, that, um, it's not only benefit us with the greater appreciation of him, but it also encourages others who would see our witness. You know, sometimes we feel we are in captivity or exile. But the truth is, God is, is supreme. He's above everything. And he controls the entire world. Anything that enters our life, whether it's a blessing or trial, comes because the Lord has a use for it in his plan. Which is always, his plan which is always for our good. And, and you know, uh, God has told, he, he told the Israelites uh, that he was going to take them home to their own land. They have their own place. And that's what he's telling us. We've been kicked around or whatever. Our ancestors were brought over here in chains and all that kind of stuff. And each generation had it a little bit better than the other generation. So what I'm saying is that just like the Israelites, he prepared a home for them. We're going home too. You know, sometime one by one, sometime he may take a hundred at a time. I don't know. But we're going home. The Lord has, you know, the things that happen to us, the only thing we can do is trust the Lord. And when we're going through stuff, when the believers are going through a lot of stuff, um, and, and, and we go through the, our trials and our tribulations, and we keep on praising God, and we just we just keep it on. And, it, and even the unbeliever look at us and say, they don't make them take notes to say how we did. You keep right on going. But you got to get to a point. And sometimes it takes a little while for you to get to that point that you can leave it with the Lord. Because life can be some kind of rough sometimes. And you know, no matter what you do, it seems like sometimes like you just can't get it. It's just not working. But when you back off and you say, Lord, I'm giving you the hard part. I'm just going to believe you. I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to obey you. But you're going to have to work this problem out. Because it's way above my head. And sometimes when you kind of forgot it a little bit, next thing you know, the 
problem worked out. You don't remember when it happened. So, like the Israelites, I know it must have been very sad for them to be they attacked by the Babylonians and they took them from their homeland and took them in captivity. They were oppressed. They were treated bad. And our people were brought over here in chains, treated bad each generation. And now we've come all these hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds of years, and we still really ain't made a whole lot of progress. Hmm. We were doing good, pretty good at one point, but now it's like, like we're back in it. And so, um, but no matter what's going on, once we get it together with the Lord, because that's what's going to be important. Because you're going to live eternity in a long time. See, God is preparing us to return home. And someday he's going to gather all the children from all the four corners of the world. All this that were nobody will be somebody. And you know, there'll be no more injustice. Just peace and happiness. And it sounds, when you read about this, it sounds like it's too good to be true. You done seen all of this for so long. You know about this side. You just don't know about the other side. But when he tell you how it's supposed to be on that, it sounds like a fairy tale, don't it? He said, how in the world with all this life? In fact, where can I go to a place where you telling me every day I'll be like Sunday? I won't be sick no more. I won't feel bad no more like I did this morning. <laughs> ah, you know, it won't be no problem uh, paying the mortgage or what. My mortgage, she paid up. And it, it just, you know, there won't be no more repairs or anything. And all of this, this just sounds like a better thing. It's kind of hard to me. But when you come to Christ and learn the things of the Lord, then you understand. But then he tells us, but there's some work for you to do before you get there. You don't just go to all back. <clears throat> you got to you got to work. And he tells you you got to obey, you got to trust, and you got to do the work for the Lord. And you see, it's kind of like when Paul was Paul was in prison. Well, he couldn't do the work that he was doing before. He couldn't get out and start the churches and all. But what what happened? Paul kept praising God and believing God while he was bound in prison. And look what happened. He ended up having a prison ministry and writing letters to the churches. So God has a way. And he has a way and he has some people to use to get you where he wants you to be. And he'll take care of it. But we have to trust him. We have to trust in the Lord. First of all, we have to study our word. Study the word, study his word. We have to trust and obey him. And then <clears throat> we have to leave some of these, we have to leave some of these things to God. And, and let him work it out. Because everything can be so messed up sometimes you wonder, is this for real? You know, you just wonder how much worse can we get? How much, you know, how how much as the church, how much better can we get? So, but we don't know how bad it's going to get before, before he calls us home. That's the thing about it. We don't know today what this afternoon is going to bring, or definitely not what tomorrow is going to bring. So it can get a lot, it can get a lot worse. It can get a whole lot worse. And it's working to that way, it's backing up to that way. But we are like, we are not. Mm, The way we are, the way things are headed now, you just don't know. And that's where it comes in for, Lord, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know you hold tomorrow. Amen. You hold tomorrow and you hold my hand. I'm going to keep my hand in your unchanging hand because I don't know what it's going to bring. It's been trouble on every hand, but you still kept the hit. You still kept a few of us around. So I'm going to put my hand in your hand. And I'm going to let you do the hard work. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust you. But I'm going to let you do the work. 
And that's what we have to do. That's just what we have to do. And see, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know true peace. Are there any comments? Anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you very much. I also enjoyed it. Uh, what I like about it is um, folk get mad when you talk about black and white, but it's the truth, no matter what it is. And, and I like the way you present the message. You give an example, and I know you've been through it. I, I don't know you uh, outside of the church or anything, but I know you have been in the military and all that. You don't see some things. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I like about folk that present things. They come from experience. So it, it, it hits different when somebody just speaking to me, trying to teach me. And, and, and I don't know anything about them, or I do know about them and know what they're teaching and, 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 and ain't lining up with how they live. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference for me the older I get, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the church. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I enjoy your messages. Again, like I say, I want to repeat. I strongly feel that what you're preaching, uh, I said preaching, teaching, it's, it's coming from the heart. And that's what, what I like. Mm -hmm. And that's how I can receive it. You know, it's, it's, some things I can't receive from folk. Mm -hmm. I listen to them, but people be playing upon people's emotions and pretty words. See, pretty words, I, I, I ain't got ain't got no place in my heart for pretty words. Mm -hmm. But a message like this, I love it. I can I can go back during the week and, and be revived. So I appreciate you. Well, thank you. I all of mine is straight from the heart. It's straight. There's nothing fancy about it. I do know a few more words that I use, but it ain't necessary that I use to get the message up. So why use it? Were you going to say something, Sister Moore? Uh, yes, I'm just going to say, and also this lesson lets us know that God uh, is a jealous God, and he allows us to go through some things. He may impose some, some bad things upon us, but God, God is God by himself, and he can do that. But he also lets us know that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and seek, if you if you join this family, the family I'm talking about, be born again, believe, uh -huh. then, then he will forgive your sins mm -hmm. and he will heal this family. Mm -hmm. And this is and, and I'm saying the land, I'm talking about the individual. We all have something yes. to overcome uh -huh. every day. Otherwise we wouldn't be here. Bye. 
I'm too. <laughs> but are we living anything is what I'm saying. Mm. We all got something to work on, but God will. He'll, 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 he'll deliver us if it's our heart's desire. And once you're in this family, share it with someone else. If they won't, they won't want to go back, you may have to keep dragging them back in. But after a while, yeah. if you don't give up, right. if you do it for my family and me, he'll do it for all, anyone else that has to choose. Anybody on the line, outside the line? I'm talking about what I know personally. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm right. just a nobody. And you see, but God. And Zion, especially when I try to do the Sunday school lesson, the only thing I want is to be, I, I, I want, when people see me during the week or whatever, I want you to see that I'm, the, I'm living the life that I'm talking about. At least I'm trying to do anyway. And um, I, don't, I don't have, and, and I have to ask God to give me patience sometimes. Because sometimes we don't have it. Sometimes we don't have the patience with the things we should. And and I ask him every day, you know, Lord, how much longer do you want me to do Sunday school? We're going to have help. And so, and Dr. Knight once told me, I was telling her one time, I said, you know, about Sunday school, I said, it should have been for a younger person shouldn't be the one doing Sunday school because they're young, the mind is young. She said, well, God used most of them 80 years old when God used them. So I told her, I told her, don't you think God cut his close? Cut his mighty close, Lord. <laughs> but you still want to use them. Have you so? <laughs> but the thing about it, all I want to do is just be for real. Be the real person that I feel like the Lord wants me to be. And, you know, it, I can't stand here and talk to you about one thing and I'm supposed to be on the, uh, in another room, on another cloud, so to speak. No, no, no. I've been in the trenches. I know what it's like. Know what it's like to have a little bit. Know what it's like to have nothing. And I mean, I've been there. So we can talk because we have the same, you know, we've had some of the same experience. And I think sometimes some things will happen to us. Sometimes God has to Everything that happened to us, nothing happened to us that God don't know. Amen. Everything has to be come through him. And he'll permit something to happen for whatever reason we don't always know. But the thing of it is, sometimes he has to do that to get our attention, to let us realize you're walking up the wrong road. You're going the wrong way. Back up, turn around, or stop. Stand still and let me talk to you. Let me teach you something. Because when you when you learn, when you love the Lord, and when you go to the things, when you go to the Lord, when you the more you go to the Lord, the more you stay, the more you stay with the Lord, the more you see not his fault or her fault, his fault, all see your own fault. Amen. And you don't have to look in the mirror. Amen. You see your own, the closer you get to God, the more you see your own fault. And the less critical you are of other people. Because you said, Lord, I did just a bad thing to you. I mean, when you really get together with the Lord. From say, being honest. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I did worse than they did. The only thing about I didn't get caught. And they did. So, I mean, this is the way it is sometimes. All of us have done wrong. And we're going to do something wrong to leave this world. Amen. But I'm saying that um, when, when you're a lot less critical of other folks because you know you've done and if you've been caught like they caught, then you know you were blessed. You got back. You ain't got to wait until God forgive you if you be. But, but, but again too now, saying they haven't gotten caught. Everybody know everybody. And, and just because you didn't see it, I might saw it. And because I didn't expose them, it feel like they have gotten caught. So that's the thing. That's why I always say you got to be true to yourself mm -hmm. before you can be true to others. Because somebody's seen some mess you have done. I don't care who it is. And and, 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 and another thing, too, I look at folks that um, when you're trying to teach something, and if that's your weakness, say my weakness, I can't stand up here and teach you about something on weekend without saying that I'm weak in this area. But don't stand up there and act like you all that when you know that you're weak in that area. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem I have when it comes to folk. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, it's nothing wrong with it, but acknowledge it, and I can receive it better. And and and, that, and that's what I'm having a problem with today. I I tell people all the time, I, I ain't there yet. But now something on weekend, I'm not gonna be preaching to you about you know you need to pay your bills and I ain't paying mine. Mm -hmm. I mean it's a little simple thing, and, and we at a time now in life that I am. I'm 60 years old. I know I ain't got long, but I'm just saying it's time out for a whole lot of foolishness. Just be true. People are looking for the truth. It's so much mess out here now. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of mess, especially messy folk, especially people that don't stand for nothing, mm -hmm. but but they say they all about this and they all about that. And they ain't about nothing. And and you can say I'm judging or whatever. I'm just telling the truth. I'm like a uh, Reverend um, Atkins. He said the folks don't want to hear the truth. The rest of my women had their shirt made. And 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 and, and, and it's me. And, and like I tell people, if it, if it's something I'm doing, come to me. Let's talk about it. I want to get it right. I mean, that's how I grow. I, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't from constructive criticism. I listen to you. I might not respond to you then, but I bet you see a change because if it's a good thing, then I'm going to do better. Well, you know, uh, sometimes if you if you listen, it says that if you, if you read, pray, study the word, and just listen for yourself. You can pick up on a lot of things. And sometimes, you know, as the saying says, no matter what you, how much you know, you really realize you really don't know nothing. All right. So we, you know, as we as we come along and as we grow in the Lord, we start to see our own faults, and then we start to try to straighten out our own sin. And uh, you know, therefore. Once we get it together with the Lord, we start to start looking at our own thoughts and say, you know, he didn't, he or she didn't, well, no worse than what I did, or whatever. But you, you take that as a lesson, and you move on. You can't stay there, mm -hmm. but you move on. Ask the Lord forgiveness and move on. Because you know something else going to come in. And the more longer you stay here, the more chances you're going to have of a lot of things, a lot of things going on. So we just, we know we're not perfect, but we, the thing about it, you can be honest, cause God knows your heart. I don't care how you talk, how pretty you talk or how pretty you're singing, but God knows the heart. And that's what counts. So if you're, you're sincere, then you, you know, you talk to God about it. God will take care of all of us. He don't always fix it like we want it to, but he'll fix it. Like he won't do. And it'll be for our good and his glory. Are there any other comments? Let's take sure that at the end of the day, if we all, if we all will learn to love the love of God, then we will find ourselves in a much better condition than we are. But when we keep self in the world, we realize the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God, including us. And so we learn to realize the next person belongs to God just like I think I do. And, and so instead of casting them aside or whatever the case may be, no. We talk because we're building the house of God. And so the thing about it is, just think about it. You are no better than anyone else. God loves the next person just like he loves you. Just because you feel like you're being blessed so, and all this stuff. But don't let that fool you. Don't have that false confidence. Don't let it fool you. He blessed all of us. He has blessed all of us. Are there anything else? Thank you, ma'am. I'm glad you did. Tune in again next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. If there aren't any other comments, then this goes.
Chapel and St. Stephen Sunday Church School, July 2nd, 2023. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon Riggs. Opening song was Just a Closer Walk with Thee by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic, World Peace. Background passage, Zechariah 9, 9 through 17. Key verse, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Zechariah 9, 16. Lesson was reviewed for 40 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Come on. Lesson was reviewed for 40 minutes by Attendance in-house is 20, online, for a total of 27. Offering was $35, no, offering was $42. Remarks were given by representative from the class. The weather is warm, all officers remain the same. Sitting Secretary, Sister Lois Lewis. Thank you for the minutes reading that on Monday and correction of the minutes this morning. If not, we will see the minutes that have been read this morning. We just stand close out with the word and then and we turn it over to they made for us. Yeah. Uh -huh. 